Welcome to Pasha PH and you are watching SRHR webcast, uh, The Stories and Conversations on Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights in the Philippines. Magandang hapon, ako po si Teta ng WGNRR. Magandang hapon, ako si Chef from WGNRR and Pasha PH is your panel on the latest updates on sexual and reproductive health and rights or SRHR. Kaya we invite everyone to follow this page and always be informed and help support women and girls make informed choices on their body, health, and lives free from discrimination, stigma, and violence. Pasha PH is managed by Wimas Global Network for Reproductive Rights and today's webcast is brought to us by the SHE Project uh, supported by Oxfam and Global Affairs Canada. So, Chef, ano ba yung latest na mga trending news and stories na may kinalaman sa ating mga kalusugan at karapatan? All right. So for our first news item, nag-clarify kamakailan lang ang Commission on Population and Development o POPCOM na ang teen pregnancy rate natin ay 40 to 50 per week, hindi per year. I think klarong-klaro dito sa recent clarification ng POPCOM at sa recent pronouncements ng Executive Director nila na si Undersecretary Juan Antonio Perez na very alarming itong teen pregnancy rate natin at kailangan siyang i-address. Anong masasabi mo dito, Tepa? Uh, nakakalungkot syempre kasi... Practically, uh, yung balita, no, pregnancy sa mga very young adolescents, when we say very young adolescents, ito yung mga 10 to 14 years old, and they're still children. And mamaya may guest tayo to explain why children should not be having children at anong dapat gawin natin dito. Yes. Ayan. Tama, tama naman. So excited din ako marinig yung input ng ating guest speaker for today. So let's move on to our next news item. For our next news item, uh, nag-react ang former child actor na si Cyril Madabat to lewd remarks o mga bastos na comments na iniwan ng mga netizens sa kanyang mga photos. Sabi ni Cyril, sexual harassment is never okay. So, um, ano naman yung thoughts mo dito? Bale, nag-post si Cyril ng photo na naka-crop top. Usong-uso naman sa mga kabataan ngayon. At yun nga, maraming nag, um, nag-iwan ng mga comments. And nangkita naman natin to before, eh, pag every time may mga child actors na parang uh, nagdadalaga, biglang ang dagsa ng mga lewd comments uh, and uh, remarks. So ayun, so uh, sumagot nga si Cyril, sabi niya sexual harassment is no, never okay. Pagkatapos nun, bu- nagkaroon pa ng backlash. So sinasabihan siya na, ay, hindi actually okay dapat uh, inexpect mo yan kasi yung society natin ngayon ganito. So maraming victim blaming na nangyayari. Pero meron namang um, skonting silver lining kasi maraming netizens rin naman ang lumabas para i-defend si Cyril at i-point out nga yung mga ginagawa ng i- iilang netizens na victim blaming. Yes, to everyone watching, please repeat after me. Sexual harassment is never okay, Gab, sabi nga ni Cyril. At uh, wala kayong karpatan and whatever a woman and a girl is wearing is never an invitation for you to harass or make comments on the, about their bodies. Ito ba yung mga comments ng mga netizen? Nakita natin ito no, sa isang post? May nag, nag-post na yes. Oo, yes. Nakakapanlulumo nga talaga. Pero nakikita mo rin naman may mga replies at may mga angry reacts. So at least meron namang mga netizens that are standing up for women and girls uh, against sexual harassment. Yes, yeah, so let's always continue our conversation at dito sa Pasha PH, uh, mag-feature pa tayo no, ng mga uh, stories tungkol dito. At uh, bago, uh, thank you, Chef, for those news. Ano ba mga iba pang kaganapan sa September? I know it's a very busy day for sexual and reproductive health advocates. Yes, very alive ang ating September with um, various observances related to sexual and reproductive health. So last September 4, actually, yung World Sexual Health Day. And uh, upcoming naman, this September 26, ang World Contraception Day. And on September 28, ang International Safe Abortion Day. Very, very timely itong mga dates na din sa pag-uusapan natin today. No? Our topic, our, our focus for this uh, afternoon is about teenage pregnancy. Na yun nga isang balita uh, kanina. So thank you, Chef, for the news. And we will be joined now by our guest to explain more tungkol sa balitang yon na mula sa PAPCOM. Please help me welcome the Executive Director of Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development, Mr. Rom Dongueto. Hi, Sir Rom. 
Hello, magandang tanghali sa inyong dalawa. Thank you so much for joining us in Pasha PH. Sir Rom, what prompted this clarification from Popcom? Well, recently, madalas lumalabas, no? Si Doc Chippy, who is the executive director of uh, Popcom, dahil nga may iba yung interest, no? Dito sa pagtaas ng bilang ng mga bata, adolescents, no? In our country, na nabubuntis, no? Lalo na sa panahon ng pandemya. At, uh, Pagkaroon nga ng mga iba't ibang interes kahit sa media. And I think may isang na-misscoat siya ng isang uh, report. Uh, kaya kailangan niyang i-correct yung information na yan. No? Mm. Alam nyo, teta, itong sinasabi ni Doc JP ay hiwalay pa sa madalas nating naririnig na sa ating bansa. No? There is a very serious problem of... Uh, Increasing number of children having children. Mm. Mga yung binabanggit nyo kanina. At kami rin sa PLCPD, we are, we are, this is a, a very important part of our advocacy, itong continuing incidence of prevalence of child marriage. So what's, what's the situation, sir? Ano bang sitwasyon? Ilan ba ang mga kabataan? And at what age are they getting pregnant? Actually, ayon sa datos mismo ng ating pamalaan, ano, at uh, ito, NDHS uh, uh, and uh, PSA, PAPCOM, even yun na PA, itong mga datos na babanggitin natin. No? Uh, naririnig natin that there are 24 babies no, born to teenage mothers every hour. That's more than 500 teenage girls giving birth every day. And over 200,000 babies are born to teenage girls each year. So, very alarming. And what is, uh, at, at ang mas malubha dito, no? at ito yung narinig nyo kanina, and report nyo kanina, 50, 40 to 50 children, age 14 years and below, are giving birth every week. No? Every week. Every week. So, itong teenage pregnancies natin ay pabata ng pabata. No? It has doubled in the last decade. For adolescent birth rate, we are second to Laos. No? Since the, the law was passed in 2012, according to PACCOM, there are 380,000 adolescent births uh, dito sa ating bansa. No? At uh, ayon naman sa UNFPA, 33 billion yung lost opportunities. No? Potential income is lost annually due to teenage pregnancies. Ito ang mga reasons why NEDA in 2019 declared the teenage pregnancy o yung mataas na birth rate among adolescents in the country is a national social emergency. Why is it happening, sir? Bakit maraming mga bata ang nabubuntis? Malam, maraming dahilan, ano? At uh, siguro itong mga bagay na to ay hindi bago sa inyo, no? There are several reasons. Ang isa dyan, at uh, ito problema ng governance no according to the reproductive health law yung co comprehensive sexuality education is a very important uh, feature or component of, of this law uh, mula nung ipatupad ang reproductive health law noong 2014 because after its enactment in 2012 na nagkaroon ng mga petition nagkaroon ng anti-order, kaya 2014 lamang nung nagsimulang ito ay patupad. So more or less, mga six years tayong tumatakbo, no, itong programa ayon sa batas. Pero itong comprehensive sexuality education ay nanatiling atrasado at hindi na-implement. At mamaya siguro papalalimin natin yan. Mm -hmm. So, may kakulangan ng informasyon at edukasyon. Yung informasyon, no, uh, bahagi pa rin ng batas that the Department of Health is mandated by the law to uh, to put up or implement a uh, sustained behavior change information campaign. Yan, hindi rin natin nakikita yan no? sa loob ng anim na taon. At isa sa mga kahinaan ng ating batas, itong RPRH law, kasi alam nyo, itong ating batas, uh, very difficult yung dinaan ng proseso no? sa Kongreso at sa Supreme Court. At ang isang importanteng provision 
na nawala ay yung, yung access ng mga bata sa serbisyo. So ngayon, walang serbisyo yung ating mga kabataan, yung ating minors, pagdating sa kanilang mga pangangailangan at problema sa kanilang reproductive health. What services should this be, sir? Ano ba mga serbisyo na dapat in place for young people? And, can they, and should they be able to access them on their own? Dapat bang may consent, may kasama? Ano po ba ang dapat at recommendations, especially from the civil uh, society? Mayaman ang karanasan sa iba't ibang mga bansa. No? At yan naman ay eh, naging bahagi ng mga diskurso nung ito ay pinag-uusapan pa sa Kongreso, itong batas na ito. Itong comprehensive sexuality education at services na dapat natatanggap ng mga bata ay dapat age appropriate no at uh, age and development appropriate at dapat yan ang mga serbisyo ay friendly non discriminatory non judgmental uh, na aayon sa kanilang pagiging bata o kabataan so unfortunately hindi yun ngayon no bahagi ng policy environment at masasabing programa ng pamana. Well, sa private sector, NGOs are, are doing its best no, to provide those kinds of services. Pero sa pampublikong uh, programa ng ating pamalaan, which is, I think, uh, very important. No? Kasi pondo eh. Usapin nito ng pondo at, uh, at uh, pamalaan dapat ang nagpapatakbo. Wala po yan. No? Saka sa loob po yan, ayos ng ating polisiya at programa. Lagi nga binabanggit, uh, Philippines, maraming batas. Uh, uh, marami din nagbabanggit actually from other countries that Philippines have a lot of progressive laws compared to other contexts daw. Is this true? Do we have enough laws? Or are we looking at this na kailangan pa natin ng bagong batas? O is just a matter of governance at pagpapatupad and financing? Ano, saan po ba yung nagbabag daw? Teta, totoo yung dalawang binanggit mo. No? Marami tayong batas pero may problema tayo sa karamihan ng ating mga batas pagdating sa implementation. Pero kulang pa rin tayo ng mga policy at sana may panahon tayo para i-discuss mamaya yan because PLCPD is uh, pushing for the enactment of uh, Prevention of Adolescent Pregnancy Act no? sa kapwa, no? uh, Senado at House of Representatives. At itong aming isinusulong din, yung prohibition of... Uh, Uh, child marriage, no? ay mga batas na sa tingin namin magpapalakas sa RPRH law kung itong mga ito ay, ay uh, tatanggapin at maaprobahan ng Kongreso sa loob ng 18 Congress. So, na-discuss niyo po yung problems of governance and policies. How does culture play uh, a role into all of this? Kasi naalala ko po, uh, malaki talaga ding resistance sa CSE, yung pag or comprehensive sexuality education, yung iniisip nila na pagtuturuan mo yung bata, then they might get more promiscuous, o baka mag-try sila. Uh, ano po ba yung mga cultural aspects na nag, uh, nag-prevent uh, sa, sa implementations ng mga batas and policies? Uh, pagdating sa comprehensive sexuality education, na kontingin ko dyan, ang malaking problema natin ay political will, mm-hmm. conservative but religious beliefs, at social attitudes ng mga leader ng pamalaan, particularly ng Department of Education. Nitong nakaraang administrasyon at ang kasaloko yung administrasyon, natulog yung programa ngayon. In fact, ngayon lang sinisimula ng DepEd ang kanilang, pinatawag nilang pilot implementation nitong uh, comprehensive sexuality education, which I think will, will cover three regions no, in the country. So, masyado na pong late ito, no? at ngayon lang tayo nagpa-pilot. And unfortunately, ito, ito ay panahon ng pinapilot nila, ay panahon na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Sa kung saan nag-aagawa ng mga ahensya ng pamalaan ng budget sa kanilang mga priority program. Mahigpit po ngayon ang kalakayan sa Kongreso, no? saan nadalhin ang pamalaan ng mga, mga pondong yan. Eh, samantalang itong mga taon-taon pinomonitor namin ang DepEd kung nagsasalang sila ng kanilang budget for the implementation of their uh, of this comprehensive sexuality education as mandated by the law. Wala. Wala silang mabagal. No? In fact, only in 2018 nang nagkaroon sila ng policy directive. This, this is the policy paper that supposedly will guide 
the implementation. Mm-hmm. That was uh, two years ago, tapos ngayon lang ipapilot. So medyo mabagal, mabagal po talaga. So pilot uh, pilot pa lang siya and in three areas or regions pa lang. Three regions so. So na waglit natin kanina teta na yung isang syempre yung isang reason bakit nagkakaroon ng mataas na adolescent pregnancy is the early sexual debut or premarital sexual activity of of young people no. Mm. Yan, yan ay realidad sa ating lipunan. So bakit hindi dapat ito aabot sa isang social emergency kung in place yung mga programa at serbisyo ng pamahalaan. What I mean is the information, education, and services are in place, no? Mm-hmm. To address uh, itong, well, mga, mga kabataan talaga ay mag experimento na sila ng kanilang ano eh, sexualidad eh. Yes, sir. And actually, evidence show na in context and mga countries na may strong uh, sexuality education, actually, it promotes um, responsibility or responsible behavior sa mga young people. Kasi pag informed ka, uh, the more you know of the consequences ng gagawin mo. Sure. Nga, yes, misinformation or stigma tungkol sa sexuality uh, education. Going back, sir, dun sa CSE and pilot, um, kasi ano eh, um, itong pandemic, nagiging mas malaki yung role ng parents at kasama sa bahay sa involvement ng education ng mga bata kasi at home sila eh, at wala hindi na nila kasama sa classroom uh, environment yung teacher nila all the time katulad ng dati no prior to the pandemic i mean hindi ba mas lalong mahirap ito i mean because culturally hindi madali para sa mga bata makipag-usap sa mga magulang nila tungkol sa kanilang katawan at tungkol sa kanilang sexualidad. I could not, di ko ma-imagine paano, for example, kung sa lesson nila on sexuality education, tapos kailangan nila magtanong, madali, pwede pa natin itanong sa magulang. Siyempre, uh, mas mahirap itong gawin sa panahon ng pande- uh, pandemic. Ngayon, lumalabas itong, ano, no, uh, tama yung binabanggit mo, Teta. Kaya nga po, ang sinasabi rin itong uh, mga bagong uh, proposals, no, Uh, for uh, the prevention of teenage pregnancy. Napakaganda po ng mga provisions no, na nandito ngayon sa mga panukalang batas. Pagdating sa comprehensive sexuality education, mula po sa RPRH law na makover po yung mga uh, out-of-school youth, no? uh, mm-hmm. out-of-school adolescents, no? uh, at yung mga non-discriminatory uh, uh, components nitong CSE o comprehensive sexuality education towards LGBT no uh, and and uh, children or adolescents with disabilities no at ang focus nitong binabanggit na mga panukalang batas lalong lalo na itong bill ni Senator Risa Ontiveros kanina kasi galing ako sa isang discussion then mm-hmm. online at binahagi ni attorney uh, Jay no became bakema yung kanyang uh, chief of staff yung mga elements nitong comprehensive sexuality education as proposed by the bill of senate of uh, our chair person in the senate senator risa yung pangangailangan na pati mga magulang at guardians ay matutunan no yung mga tamang kaalaman uh, evidence based no uh, na comprehensive sexuality education so itong laman ng programa ng panukalang batas ay aabot sa mga batayang komunidad no at iti-train pati yung mga parents and guardians. At natatandaan ko sa ilang mga discussion sa Senado, may mga mechanisms eh, like Parents Teacher Association, na kung saan aabutin pati yung mga teachers, no? Dahil magsasalubong yan, may effort ang DepEd, uh, tapos itong bagong batas, no? Na parents and teachers are talking, interacting on 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 how to educate themselves and their children on very important no uh, topics on uh, sexual reproductive health and rights so panahon ng pandemic sir like uh, the plans for this pilot were done prior to the situation uh, ano po sa tingin niyo in your in your view what could be done in addition pa sa mga plano given na naging ganito na ngayong sitwasyon at ang mode of education malaki yung problema natin hindi lang sa edukasyon sa panahon ng <laughs> 
Sabi, Kasi naisip ko nga, sir, di ba sa FN, sabi, 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 sharing modules, sabi, modules pa lang. Kasi diba? sa panahon ngayon, talagang nahihirapan yung mga ahensya, no, na i-implement yung mga essential services, including reproductive health and family planning. Tapos itong sinasabi na sa bahay, no, hakayaan ng mga magulang. Baka, ewan ko kung saan ang galing yung information na yun, but hindi ko alam kung magagawa yan ngayon. Kasi ito nga yung datos din ng UPPI at United Nations Population Fund. No? During the lockdown, no, because of the quarantine restriction, of course, due to COVID-19 pandemic, there will be additional 200,000 pregnancies. Yung baby boom. Uh, nating datos ay 18,000 or 20,000, no? 18,000 to 20,000 of these uh, pregnancies are will be attributed, no, to teenage pregnancy. So ibig sabihin lang sa panahon ng pandemya, itong mga unintended pregnancies na to ay nagaganap. Kaya kung paano ito kakabuli ng ating pamalaan? Kasi tatakbo pa itong pandemya na to hanggang hmm. next year. Magandang marinig yan sa aktual, no? Uh, kung paano nila tutulungan yung mga families and even schools, no? How will they uh, try to uh, siguro pabilisin, no? Yung proseso para maabot. Kasi magbubukas na naman yung, yung eskwelahan sa October 8. At magkaroon ng dekalidad, no? Uh, age and development appropriate sexual and reproductive health education for our children. Tingnan uh, natin. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Tingnan natin from our comments section kung may dagdag ba, may mga dagdag ba, Chef, na comments from our viewers? May tanong ba? Yes, um, Chef is muted, pero I think may question from Rostam na nabanggit na rin uh, kanina ni, ni Sir Ram. Pero uh, can you repeat nga, Chef? Ano yung isang comment natin from our um, viewers? Okay. So, meron tayong question from Sir Rostam na bakit ba hindi kaya ng health systems na masawata ang teen pregnancy? So, yung mga health programs ng government. Tapos, meron lang ding, uh, I think, important na clarification, although nabanggit naman earlier, yung 40 to 50 pregnancies per week ay hindi yung buong teen pregnancy rate, pero 10 to 14 years old laban. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chef. So, uh, Sir, rejoinder, rejoinder dun sa uh, banggit. So, Uh, you've already mentioned uh, governance, political will. Ano pa bang mga factors daw sa health systems ang uh, nagiging problema? Bakit daw hindi talaga masawata ang teenage pregnancy? Hindi lang kasi health systems yung usapin dito. Eh, no? Kagaya ng binabanggit natin kanina. Hindi lang po services. No? Bagamat napakalagang aspeto yung access ng no, mga kabataan sa serbisyo, no? Pero magkakasama po yung nakabalangka sa ating batas, yung RPRH law, ang papel ng iba't ibang ahensya at programa ng ating pamalaan. Kagaya po ng responsibilidad at mandato ng Department of Education to provide comprehensive age and development appropriate no, education on sexuality and reproductive health. So, edukasyon, serbisyo, at yung binabanggit ko kanina na tungkulin ng Department of Health na maglunsad ng sustenido na behavior change communication. Alam nyo, al alam ko marami sa nakikinig sa atin, alam po kung gaano naging bitter debate itong R RPRH law discussion sa Kongreso for 11 years starting in 2001. At marami po sa debate na yan ay mga misinformation. Ang daming misinformation. Kaya kung progresibo lamang mag-isip ang maraming opisyal natin sa pamahalaan, dapat hinabol nila yon eh. Dapat hinabol nila yon kasi yung misinformation na yon ang nagpropel. Hmm. Ang nagpropel sa problemang ito. Huh? Ng mataas na teenage pregnancy sa ating bansa. Wala kang edukasyon, wala kang informasyon, wala kang serbisyo. Eh saan pupunta itong problemang ito kung hindi lumala, di ba? 
So y- yun yung sinasabi nating responsibilidad ng pamahalaan. And I think NEDA is in the right direction when it declared that this is a social uh, emergency situation which calls for, number one, Congress to intervene. We really need the, the intervention of Congress no, to provide the additional uh, uh, frameworks no, or, or mandates no, upang tulungan ng RPRH law na maging effective and particularly to address the high birth no, rate of teenage pregnancy sa ating bansa. Kasi ito na nga yung problema pero ang, ang, ang parang ang kondukta ng ating mga ahensya ng pamalaan ay business as usual. Do you think this will be among the priority of Congress? Like, especially election time is in the air na naman. Do you, do you see this as becoming one of the priorities and even an agenda of the Congress? Alam nyo, anumang usapin ng reproductive health at karapatan ng mga kababaihan no, sa kanilang katawan at kanila ay isang uphill battle. No? Naniniwala ko, maganda yung binanggit ni Atty. J. kanina. It's an uphill battle pagdating sa sexual and reproductive health and rights. Yeah, totoo so, pa dyan, sir. So, maniniwala kami sa PLCPD, kagaya ng karanasan, no? ng buhay nating karanasan, sa pakikibaka natin sa RPRH law na isang determinadong koalisyon no? ng mga samahan ng kababaihan, kabataan, NGOs, POs na magtutulak no? para sa isang prosigidong kampanya, panawagan at kasama ang mga champions natin sa Congress. Kakayanin natin yan. Nandiyan pa kami sa Kongreso yung mga oppositors eh, hindi naman sila nawawala, pabalik-balik lang naman ng mga politiko. Pero I think we have the we have the arguments, no? We have the evidence. We have the basis for calling uh, for uh, calling the attention of Congress to prioritize these measures. Uh, very quickly lang, sir, we've been mentioning RPRH law, its history, and so far no naging problema. It has been more than five years. Are we looking at um, Paano ba siya mas strengthen? We're looking at like reviewing this at saka ba may baguhin? Uh, ano po ba ang tingin natin with our RPRH law? Well, uh, sa RPRH law, kahit nung nakaraang kongreso, ang panawagan namin ay napapanahon ng gawin ng kongreso yung mandato niya. May mandato yung kongreso eh, na dapat every five years ng implementation ng batas ay gawin ito ang, ang pag-review, no? yung kanyang oversight function. So, mag anim na taon na tayo ngayon sa implementation, I think it's time for Congress to really seriously look into this uh, uh, to this matter. Ikalawa, gusto natin na sa panahon ng pandemya, nag-aagawan man tayo ng budget, i-prioritize ang reproductive health sapagkat these are essential services. Big social programs, no? Uh, kagaya ng sinasabi natin para sa kabataan, para sa mga ina, para sa mga bata. Ikatlo, gusto nating isulong yung mga panokalang batas. Pagdating sa prevention ng teenage pregnancy at prohibition ng child marriage. Magkakawin kasi ito, teta, eh, no? Yung, yung usapin ng child marriage at uh, teenage pregnancy. Dahil ito ay masasabi nating mga issues ng adolescent reproductive health. And this is even connected to ano, sir, gender-based violence. A lot Correct. of those pregnancies and intended pregnancies they brought about violence and rape. Correct. Ang nagtatahi dyan yung sinasabi nating karahasan, no? uh, sexual violence sa mga bata. Mm-hmm. Uh, may, may binabanggit din kami sa PLCPD na isa pang komplikasyon. No? Yung sinasabi nating importanting dimension Sinabi nga ng media yung dark side of teenage pregnancy. At ito yung sexual violence. no Yung Rappler, may report siya. Uh, ang title ay uh, Rape Within the Family, the Philippines, the Philippines Silent Incest Problem. No? Yes. And they peg the incest rate in the country at 33%, which is very close to the data of the National Baseline Survey on Violence Against Children organized by, by the Council for the Welfare of Children in UNICEF in 2015, which reported that 
one in every four children reportedly suffered from some form of sexual violence in any setting. The figure on incest is likely unreported. Mm. Alam natin yan kasi maraming kaso naman, hindi naman nare-report sa attention ng ating mga authorities. No? And in addition, Popcom statistics show that 15% of girls who had sex before the age of 15 reported that their first encounter was coerced. So, dyan po nagdudugtong yung pinabanggit namin na uh, sexual violence, teenage pregnancy, at yung child marriage. So, ito nga yung ano, multi- uh dimensional na problema at always naman the issue of sexual reproductive health is also affected by the other determinants of health the economic the pol the politics the culture uh, the governance no kasama na diyan kaya uh, too bad no our webcast is only very short to discuss all of this but before we let you go sir uh, can you please uh Tell our viewers what are the initiatives of PLCPD, what campaigns there are, paano makakapagsuporta, lalo na po kasi this webcast also we want to talk to or uh, converse with uh, advocates like us, uh, ano mga pwedeng gawin? Kami po ay si, uh, sa PLCPD, kasama po ng ating mga partners no, sa civil society, mga international organizations, government agencies, particularly PAPCOM, ay nagsusulong ng isang kampanya ang pangalan ay No More Children Having Children. At ayon din niya through our girl girl defend defenders no uh, alliance no kami po ay nagsusulong ng kampanya para sa panawagang ipasa ang dalawang batas sa kongreso ito po yung teenage pregnancy prevention act at yung prohibition ng child marriage at marami kaming hinahanay na mga activities kasama na po yung pagkikipagpulong sa ating mga policy champions in both houses of Congress to synchronize our efforts upang pumasa ang mga batas na ito sa loob ng 18th Congress. Maikli po ang panahon natin sa 18th Congress kasi itong, itong kampanya ito ang kikita namin mas importante hanggang first quarter of next year kasi by the end of the second regular of Congress which is uh, sometime June at magbubukas na ulit ang third regular ng July 2021 election na po yan ang bansang eleksyon. Kaya mag magkakaroon na po ng ibang atensyon lalo ang ating mga legislators. So samahan nyo kami. Uh, Makipag-ugnayan po kayo sa WGNRR na kasama rin natin sa ating mga pagsisikap sa PLCPD. Sayang, hindi ko, ma, hindi ko nahanda yung ating uh, logo, no? Nung nandun po yung mga information. But I think we can we can still pass that information. Mm, yes. to so she can, she can put it in the... Uh, in we invite our viewers to always follow Pasha PH because dun po namin then if we feature ang mga campaigns. So I think we have a video that we will share to our viewers, a short video para po uh, uh, to show the, this initiative and campaigns by PLCPD.
we have a situation and we have to act now. Yun yung message ng ating video. At uh, pinapasabi din po ng PLCPD to sign the petition sa change.org slash no more children having children. And maraming salamat Sir Rom Dongueto and PLCPD for joining us and explaining. Uh, and I hope, Sir Rom, makakasama pa namin kayo for other webcasts and other events to to discuss with advocates and to, uh, special to young people din no, in the future tungkol dito kasi isa yung importanteng uh, bagay, aspeto din yun, no? the participation, the recognition of young people's participation themselves dito sa campaign at sa issue na to. So, Ram, last words to our viewers and uh, invite probably for next activities? Maraming salamat. It's a pleasure. So, abangan nyo lang po at magre-report po kami kila teta ng mga susunod natin uh, for kilos. Yes po, and please check PLCPD's Facebook page kung gumagawa din po sila at meron din po kayong mga podcast and webcast regularly. So, sa mga advocates po natin and SRHR activists dyan, check uh, PLCPD's page for more info on advocacy and emerging issues. Thank you so much, Sir Rom, at ingat po kayo lagi. Ayan, Chef, kamusta ang ating usapan today? Anong mga bago nating natutunan, especially for our kids? Yes. Uh, napakaganda ng discussion nyo ni Sir Rom, uh, Teta, no? Kaya thank you talaga, Sir Rom, sa pag-accept uh, pag, uh, ng aming invitation na mapunta dito sa Pasha. Ang nakuha ko dun sa discussion is meron talagang uh, may mga pagkukulang pa sa pag-implement ng RPRH law at may pangangailangan na mag around this as well as um, demanding for more legislation related to SRHR. So, ayun. And kailangan i-recognize na yun ng 10 to 14 na 40 per week na nanganak ay um, mal malaking portion doon ay uh, ma marahil victims ng gender-based violence or violence against uh, children. So, ayun. Um, Kaya ano think... Yung nabanggit rin ni Sir Rom na merong matinding misinformation surrounding these issues. So napakahalaga rin na patuloy tayong uh, na alert pagdating sa mga SRHR uh, news information and updates. At uh, dahil dyan, inaanyayahan ko ang mga viewers natin dito sa Pasha, Pasha page na mag-comment sa ating mga post at pag-usapan ng mga issue ito. At syempre abangan ang content na pinoproduce natin dito sa Pasha. Yes, let us know sa comment section, visit us in our page, anong mga issues or topics na gusto natin i-feature at pag-usapan. Dahil uh, itong issues of unintended pregnancies, especially sa panahon ng COVID-19 uh, no, pandemic where access to services are harder than before. no? Kasi dati pa naman mahirap na talaga yung pag-access at marami ng barriers for women and youngers especially. Uh, pero sa panahon ng pandemic, mas mahirap. Kaya kailangan natin pag-usapan because all, uh, as we know, unintended pregnancies may also result and could most likely result to unsafe abortions that also is a big uh, ano, no? um, uh, dahilan ng maternal mortality and morbidity. Kinabanggit natin kanina, Chef, I know marami ding mga activities in line for the September uh, 28 campaign, the International Safe Abortion Day. Check out the page of the campaign also to know more about the situation uh, regarding unintended pregnancies and unsafe abortions. So maraming salamat for joining us and we hope to see you again next Wednesday for our webcast. Thank you, Shiv, and thank you, everyone.